Thank you for joining us for the Ballot Security Webinar uh, hosted on June 30th, 2010. The speakers in this webinar is going to be Derek Moore. He is the manager of Ballot Generation, so he has hands-on, intimate experience with security of the ballots. And I will also be speaking a little bit. Um, I'm the manager of information technology here. And my name is Justin Berardino. What we're going to go over, we're going to give an introduction. We're going to talk about security with the paper ballots. We're going to talk about the chain of custody, which we will get into detail, and that covers how ballots are transported. We're going to talk about security seals and how we use that to add security to the ballots. We're going to discuss the tally room, where all the votes are tallied, and the security in that. And lastly, we're going to conclude with the voting system security. So why are we hosting this webinar? Uh, why is ballot security a webinar that we feel is important to discuss? Well, security is always a topic that comes up with elections. We feel that providing this webinar is going to help instill confidence with people um, and answer a lot of questions that people have with security. I think at the end of the presentation, you are going to feel more comfortable about security with elections and specifically with ballots. Now, discussing with security, security is, is more than just technology. Typically, people, when they think about security, they just think about preventing hackers or they think about the computer end of it and firewalls and that sort of thing. And that's a very important part of security. But there's much more to security than just that. There's procedures, there's processes, there's physical security, there's a culture of security. Uh, there is also what I have listed here is the social aspect of security. Um, one of the, the important things when providing good security is that the people that are involved in the process understand the importance of the security and they are not uh, able to be compromised from a social aspect in any way. And that is something we definitely stress here at the Registrar of Voters. Every person who comes on board goes through an extensive security training. Um, also an important part, like I mentioned earlier, is physical security. There's, you know, for example, ballots are only stored in secure locations. Ballots are not left around the office. There's only certain designated locations that ballots are in at all times. And those locations have deep physical security. Um, we do employ very good physical security here at the office. However, the specifics we're not going to go into as far as the physical security for obvious reasons. Um, we do employ all the uh, typical ways of physical security that you would think of using video monitoring, limited access, and much, much more than that. But again, we're not going to go into specifics as far as physical security. Now, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Derek Moore, and he's going to discuss the security we employ on the paper ballots. Hi. Welcome. Um, some of the things we do with our paper ballots, um, first of all, we don't just use any ordinary paper. We actually do a, a, use special, specific weighted paper. And also with that said, we um, are provided from the Secretary of State with a watermark that we have to incorporate on that paper. Um, that makes it secure for us knowing that that watermark, we can identify that stock, that ballot. Also, when it comes to our stock, that blank stock that we use is secured in a specific location and it's accounted for. We have a sign-in, sign-out procedure in place for that stock and um, it is under lock and key, if not under camera at all times. When we get to our, once we print our ballots, uh, our vote-by-mail ballots, those are scanned um, upon leaving our office and they are also scanned again when they are returned to our office. 
So the security for this is we know exactly where that ballot is. Uh, if you would call into our office, we could actually account for and say to you, yes, this ballot was sent out on such and such a day, or this ballot was received back in our office on a certain day. We also incorporate ba uh, ballot on demand printing, meaning we don't just print ballots that are not going to go to a voter. We don't just print ballots and have them laying around in our office. That ballot is printed for a specific uh, purpose, a specific voter, uh, and we don't have extras. Uh, so that's our ballot on demand process, and that also um, is a very secure process because we don't have extra ballots laying around that can get in, uh, into other hands. On our next slide here, we have chain of custody. And um, we have specific chain of custody procedures, and that goes for our ballots, for our equipment, the way our equipment is transferred, the way our ballots are transferred, the way our equipment is handled, the way our ballots are handled. And if that chain of custody is broken, certain procedures have to be in place uh, to account for what the breach in security. When we, when we send our voting equipment out, uh, we have a chain of custody from this office to the poll worker to the polling place, to the collection center, and back to our office. And we track all of that, and that's part of our chain of custody tracking. And um, <clears throat> it's a very secure system, and we take that very seriously. An inspector, um, when they are at the polling site, when they take the JVC with the voted ballots on it to the collection center, we have two persons accompanying, accompanying that JVC, as well as um, when the sheriff deputies return the JVCs to the Registrar of Voters Office on election night, there are also two persons uh, always accompanying that JVC. Okay. As uh, the suggestion again, and as I stated earlier, I you know, would like to reiterate that security is more than just uh, technology, firewalls, that sort of thing. And again, we do employ that, um, and we do follow those standards, and we do employ te technical security, physical security, and much of those other things. In this webinar, we are kind of covering the items that are specific to ballot and some of these other areas that are not typical. One of those is security seal. Now, what we do is we take tamper-proof security seals and place them on the voting equipment. And we place them on every possible opening on the voting equipment. So, for example, uh, the, the, there's a lid on the voting booth. And on election day, they open that lid so that you know, voters can vote on that. We put a security seal over the lid. That way, if it's opened ahead of time, uh, the poll worker would know because either se the security seal would be missing or if it's even peeled off and placed back on, the security seal says void. So it's tamper-proof security seal. Now, in each polling site, there's hundreds of security seals placed on the voting equipment. We also track which security seals are on which equipment. Every serial number is accounted for. So it's not just tamper-proof seals, it's serialized tamper-proof seals that are tracked at the office. Um, these, now that, that's one step, but also these security seals are checked throughout the entire voting process. Now, they're checked as we hand it off from one place to the other. And these, the poll workers, they do a great job. They're very diligent about checking these seals. Uh, again, that goes along with the social aspect. You know, they're very attuned to the importance and the security of this. And believe me, on election day, if they believe that any any security seal is different or has been tampered with, we know immediately. Um, they check these throughout the process. Even on election day, throughout the day, they check it at least three times during election day. Um, now, if there is any sign of tampering, um, I'm not saying that tampering has occurred, but even any indication of that to us, that precinct goes through 
a, a hand audit, and that is verified. And um, again, this is something that's very complicated, and it's very, uh, it's something very thorough that we do to ensure the security of our voting equipment. I think it's, um, it's something very uh, rare, too, that anybody would go to these lengths to keep the security of anything. Hey, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead there. Hey, this is Derek Moore again, and I'm going to discuss uh, tally room security. And the first thing I'd like to say is that the tally room is a critical room for an election. It is where we compile and count the um, votes that are scanned in and the electronic votes from uh, the polling site. For entry into our tally room, uh, it's required to have dual, um, dual you, have, you need dual verification for entry. And that system we have in place is fingerprint ID system, and you have to also present a proximity badge to access the tally room. On election night, we have the presence of our partner, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and they are um, a great partner we have, and we've been working with them for, oh my gosh, well, all of our elections I've been here, all 28. And what they do for us is they secure our building top to bottom, front to back, from the, not only are they bringing in the uh, voted, the electronic votes from the collection centers, they're also se securing uh, the votes once they are in our office. On election night, uh, they are posted at various places throughout the building, and then after post-election, uh, they actually provide us with night security for our ballots overnight. Uh, even though we do have security system here and we have cameras, we utilize the Sheriff's Department for post-election security. Also, outside of our tally room, uh, on election night, we have a public viewing area, and that is equipped with four viewing monitors that uh, the voter or the public can actually see various aspects of the process that is going on in the tally room. So we basically have a transparent uh, transparency here in on election night and in our voting um, and tally system. There's live streaming from the internet of our process. Uh, that entails, any you can see anything from the dock uh, the voting equipment arriving on our dock, the uh, JVCs with the voted electronic ballots arriving, us uh, removing those and sending them over to the tally room. You can see us um, processing those votes in the tally room. And as I said, it's a totally transparent system, and we welcome you to view that um, anytime you would like. Okay, the last topic I'd like to discuss is the, the security of the actual voting system itself, that we use the hard voting system here in Orange County. Now, in 2007, the Secretary of State conducted a what they called a red team audit, and it was a top-to-bottom review of the voting system. They, all the information on that is posted online if you're interested in viewing it. It's on the Secretary of State's website. And what happened in 2007 was they actually decertified all the voting systems for electronic use, except for our voting system, the heart voting system. Now, the interesting, uh, the interesting findings about this, um, a lot of the things that they point out in the report have to do with the ability um, for others to enter it through the internet or, or, or some sort of process like that. Um, not that there is that ability, but just pointing out, um, you know, that, that sort of security breach. Well, what's interesting about how we do, uh, how we create our ballot, how we tally votes, every aspect of the voting system is a closed system with no external communication. So. Any of those issues are completely impossible because when we create the ballot, it's on an isolated PC. It's not connected to 
a network. It's not connected to a phone line. It's not connected to another computer. Um, the same thing with tallying votes. Our vote tally system is in a room, as stated earlier, the tally room, which is very secure. And that system, the, the room doesn't even have internet or phone lines. And the systems in the room are, are sitting there. They're not connected to any outside computer. So there's not even a way to get to those computers. We keep those off the network. Um, we keep those off the phone lines. And that includes creating the ballot, tallying the votes, re uh, scanning in paper ballots, any part of that voting system. That also includes the actual voting equipment. When that, the voting equipment that's used at the polling places, they only communicate with each other. They're not connected at any time to any other uh, lines or any other computers or equipment. So that, that part is complete, any, any threat is completely, or any risk, I should say, is completely eliminated from that aspect. Uh, another interesting point about our voting s system is that it has redundant memory feature, meaning that the votes are stored in multiple places. This is obviously good for, you know, disaster recovery purposes, but also to verify votes. They can be verified against each other. Uh, another interesting part about the voting system, if, if any of you have voted at the point place, is that it has a paper audit trail. So when you vote, it prints out what you voted, and you have to verify that that printout is accurate before it will actually cast your vote. So any time it's necessary, we can go back to that paper record. Um, again, along the lines of, of typical voting security, or I'm sorry, typical security that's employed on any system, there's multiple passwords for entry um, into any part of the system. You have to go through multiple steps if you're able to log in. But again, in order to even do that, you have to first of all have physical access to that voting system, which is very tight. We talked about the tally room security. Those computers are kept in that secure facility. So first, if you'd have to gain physical access, you also would have to go through multiple passwords. But um, there's no way to access those systems outside of physically sitting at the computer. Um, again, with that, the, that is the conclusion of our presentation, I think, in review. Uh, we touched on some of the things that we do that are unique to voting systems and to ballots to provide security and instill confidence for the voters. Um, and these are just a few of the interesting points that we'd like to bring out. There's obviously much, much more that we do that we cannot cover in this webinar, but with this information, it should provide confidence to you that your vote and your, um, your vote counts are secure. With that, we'd like to open it up for questions. We'd like to thank you once again for attending this webinar, and that's, this concludes our yes. session. And um, again, we'd like to thank you, and if you um, thanks for watching, and also those who are going to be watching it later. Thank you.